y'all just get in? What's that? Did y'all just get in? Or? Um, we just got in a few hours ago, yeah, so it's a, it's a quick one, this, this trip for us. It's just Nashville after all, right? Um, <laughs> you know, I would have loved to hang a little bit, but we have to get back to L.A., unfortunately, yeah. tomorrow. So I think we're flying out tonight. So it's like, I've never been here, and I still won't have been here after I leave, but uh, I'll be sure to come back soon. Is the Cox Across America show there next, or is it just junkets and stuff? Or um, we, we just have to get back for some other stuff, and then he goes to uh, San Francisco on Monday, and um, and then uh, he goes to... Uh, Is it just like that? Yeah, we could just do uh, this if you want. Sure. Stand around, it's, it's well, not really going to be able to dry it off. That's yeah. fine. Let, if you want to just set up the camera on the table and uh, sure. we, can, we can just do it this way. Sure. There you go. I guess yeah. you don't move too much. Yeah. All right, just in case. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. Good? Great. Yeah. So I, I threw these questions together. Like yeah. five seconds ago, because I didn't know right. you were going to be here. Yeah, sure. Um, so I listened to the uh, the Fresh Air interview. Oh, good. Both of you did the other night. And wow. I don't. They asked so many good questions. I'm like, okay, what can I <laughs> you haven't been asked for every junket. Yeah. Um, but you've talked about it. You and Judd both talked about how you, were, when you're writing, you had uh, John C. Riley in your mind for the whole time you were That's writing. Right. You were really yeah. writing it for him. We really did write it for him. We we knew sort of from the beginning that that was our. Uh, right. Um, um, yeah, it's true. We wrote the movie for John. We we had this idea early on uh, about uh, you know doing a movie like this, this character, the, the the fake life story of this, or the 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 true life story of this ridiculous fictional character, yeah. and. Um, we uh, sort of got it in our heads that as soon as we started talking about who it should be, we, we knew John was really the guy to do it. Yeah. But it, it was a singing from like Chicago and... Uh, it was the and combination of that he's a brilliant actor and a hilariously funny guy. Were you familiar with the sea shanties by that point? Or? <laughs> Uh, I was familiar with his. Uh, I was familiar with his monstrous voice, you yeah. know. And we so we knew he could sing. I've got to say, as much as I knew he could sing, I didn't know he could sing quite like this. And yeah. what he's done in the movie is just um, an amazing, you know, vocal achievement, really. Yeah. Uh, I listened to how the you had a bunch of different people give you all the songs, uh, and then you kind of sorted through those and figured out what were the best. Um, how much? I mean, did other people write them completely, or did y'all sit down and say, okay, I like where you're going here, let's, let's change um, this up, or you just kind of gave it to the musicians and, and then picked through what they gave you back? Um, well, what would happen was we, we would, uh, with um, Mike Andrews, who produced all the music, and uh, Manish Raval and Tom Wolf, who are the music supervisors, we sort of contacted a bunch of people and asked them, you know, to, to, take a, to read the script and... Uh, take a crack at anything that they that sort of got under their skin, you know. Yeah. And so we started getting these demos back from initially a whole bunch of people. And then very quickly it became a, a, a core group of four or five guys that were doing most of it. And a lot of them were guys that I had already uh, known personally, was familiar with their work. Dan Byrne, Mike Viola, um, uh, Marshall Crenshaw wrote the title song. I, I didn't know, but we uh, managed to call him up and said, you know, do you want to take a look at this? And um, we, we sort of found some guys who, who were writing these great songs that were making us laugh, you know. Yeah. The, uh, the Royal Jelly. Yeah. I was driving it's in my car. Incredible. I was laughing out loud. I, I mean, it was it's so dead on a Dylan song, incredible. but it's also... Just totally off the wall, yeah. <laughs> I know. I love that. Oh, good. I'm glad you felt that way. Yeah, I mean, well, when I first saw the commercial for this, I didn't even know who was doing it, and I just saw that it was going to be a parody, which I love parodies. But oh, good. Particularly when it's a parody that's done with, you know, talent behind it, <laughs> uh, you know, in a budget, it actually makes a big difference. Um, well, there's no question that uh, this was uh, the world's most complicated stupid joke to yeah. uh, to, to achieve, and we, we all put a, a ridiculous amount of almost embarrassing amount of energy into the, uh, getting the everything as accurate it, as possible. The quality which, elevates it above 
just that you know those the dumb jokes. You know? Uh well, I'm glad you think so. We we uh, we 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 love we love our dumb jokes, and uh, you know, there's got to hang them on something. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> with the ensemble that you got together, I mean, that had to be the most fun. Yeah. About making a film. I mean. It, it was uh, it was it was about uh, you know couldn't have been more fun. We just had this unbelievable group of people. You know the way it works in the movie because John's in every scene and playing the part from the time he's 14 to the time he's 80. Um, you know the effect of it is we have this huge cast of hilarious people sort of rotating through in scenes opposite John, sometimes for one scene, sometimes for ten, you know. But it was it was kind of an interesting thing to do because it was John every day and then this just amazing sort of um, rotation of, of, of some of the funniest people we could think of.